we are live. So, welcome to The Mandalorian, Season 1, Episode 2, Thoughts. This episode is called The Child. So, spoilers for the Star Wars movies leading up to this point, and this show up to and including this episode. I may discuss theories that might spoil upcoming episodes in this video. This video is not a review, it's a series of, well, thoughts, some analysis, some of jokes, etc. When the entire show has aired, and I've been able to watch every single episode of all the seasons they make, I will do a spoiler review, so I will not be going into my regular review stuff in this video. Now, as a fan of a lot of Star Wars, I will just briefly give my ratings and ranking. So, in the order that they were released, I rate the Star Wars movies, episodes 4 and 5 are 10 out of 10. Episode 6 is a 6. All three prequels are 5 out of 5. 5 out of 10. Episode 7 is a 7 out of 10. Rogue One is an 8. Episode 8 is a 10 out of 10. And I have not watched... Solo and episode 9 yet and ranking the films worst to best 2 3 1 6 7 row 1 4 5 8 and This episode is quite good Let's see the Right so the only broad acting performances in this episode are the Jawas, and that definitely works. It is a dark episode. Some great acting performances in the episode. I think the episode lives up to its potential. And there are great character moments for all characters. Everyone behaves in character. And... It, it fares pretty decently on diversity. All of the Jawas are played by dwarves. I know, not a surprise, but still praiseworthy. And at least one of them is a woman, and Kuili is played... The, the physical part is played by a woman. And... Right, so a couple of things that I forgot to say last time. The first episode is one of the best pilots I've ever seen. I love that at first we don't see that Mando shot IG-11, we just see a blast, and then we see IG-11 fall, like, at first, the first time you watched it, you know, if you watched it before anybody spoiled or something, you would have thought that IG-11 did shoot, that Mando let him shoot Grogu. I think I may have accidentally called this a miniseries in my video on the first episode. Obviously, this show is not a miniseries, it's a series with short seasons compared to, you know, the usual 22 episodes per season thing. I don't think it's possible for me to overstate how perfect I think it is that Jon Favreau is working with Star Wars. It's 100% obvious he is a huge fan of it and has been since he was a child. There's no other franchise I am as enthusiastic about the idea of him working on as Star Wars. The first episode literally starts with the classic western scene of a cowboy walking into a saloon and there's conflict in the air. And that brings us to the specific notes for this episode. After the opening we see Mando walking through a canyon. I want to say it is, I, you know, details like the lizards and the mud really help make it feel like a real place. As far as I know it's filmed on a set. Great short-range fight between Mando and... I forget what those aliens are called. I'm not talking about the Jawas. Yeah, I used to know. I swear. I fought them in some of the games. And, another, yeah, another thing I meant to say about the first episode. In, in the bar, they intentionally scratched his armor because they know how... Like, that would... You know, that's that's his whole thing. Like, he's... You know, so they're trying to provoke him into a fight, but he still managed to wait until the best circumstances. He didn't take the bait. Mando's vaporizing Jawas. Holy crap. It's cool to see Jawas in this conflict situation. We haven't seen them like this in any of the movies. 
and Mando almost gets crushed against the mountain, but he just barely takes cover from it in time on the crawler. I like that Mando isn't perfect. Not every move he makes trying to climb the Jawa crawler is flawless. Flawless characters are very boring to watch. They can be fun to play as in video games, but they're very boring to watch. Grogu ate an alien frog right off the ground. Yeah, kids will do that. Not alien frogs specifically, but like kids will put anything in their mouths that they feel like, yeah. And I like that at first the attempts to trade do not go well. I didn't realize Jawas were as big jerks as this reveals them to be. Jerks for sure, but not this big jerk. I really love, you know, we see Mando shining a light on just, you know, something. He's, he's you know, trying to get to, he, he knows that there's supposed to be an egg in here. He's trying to get to that, and he's shining a light. It, it seems like, oh, he's just, it's like a, like a surface, like a, a rock he's shining on. And then suddenly an eye opens. It's like how an empire, they accidentally land in the mouth of a giant space slug. I like that Mando faces a real challenge with the... The, the subtitles identify the creature as a mud horn. Great use of focus to underline how badly messed up and Mando is. And yeah, Mando is basically done for, but Grogu already has substantial force powers and lifts the mud horn with TK, and Mando stabs it in the exact right spot to kill it instantly. No wonder the Jawas are willing to part ways with so much in return for this egg. They don't come across very many people or creatures who can steal mudhorn eggs. A new rock source points out everyone seems to abuse Wookiees in the Star Wars galaxy. You know, the Jawas' example of speaking Jawa badly is he sounds like a Wookiee. And Grogu sleeps for a really long time recovering from using the Force. He does wake up at the end, thankfully. And they montage their way through fixing the ship. I really like the, the character moments between Mando and the Ugnaught Kuili. After the ship has been fixed, Mando offers to share the reward, then offers him a job. And finally, just his thanks. And, yeah, you know, the... Like, you could really understand why Kuili... You know, at, at first, let's see, the reward, I can't because you're my guest. And then a job, I've worked for a very long time to leave a, was it, servitude or something like that, you know. And then, you know, well, then you have my thanks and you have mine. Now, Disney Plus has a series of extras on the show called Disney Gallery The Mandalorian. To really appreciate how they labor to bring Kuili the Okno to life, other than Nignolte doing a voice, you have a little person doing the physical. She's got a mask on her head with animatronic facial features that are controlled by puppeteers on set. And she has to try to cue them for when she wants to deliver a line. They can't communicate directly. So that's, yeah. And, and it's completely convincing. You know, you, I mean, we know, obviously we know, because we've seen stuff before. We've seen other animatronics, but it doesn't feel like you're looking at an effect, you know. Yeah, they, they do an absolutely incredible job, and I am really excited to see what's going to happen next time. And, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.